Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at First Christian Church in Bowling Green. So I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds as we enter into a time of worship. Every journey needs energy to get going. What we eat provides fuel for us to get up and to get moving. Most everyone agrees that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. The right breakfast gets us headed in the right direction, reminding us that we are alive and breathing and giving us food for the journey ahead. This morning's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. After this, there was a festival of the the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew, Beth Zeta, which which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind and lame and paralyzed, and one man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat, mat, and he began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. But later Jesus found him in the temple and he said to him, see, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have all had those once-in-a-lifetime trips. Treks that took us to incredible places, to far-off lands or breathtaking sights. Some of us are lucky enough to have been able to go on several of these type of trips. Sometimes our trips or our treks aren't necessarily to distant lands, but to simply an around-the-corner place that takes us away from our everyday lives, that offers us peace and tranquility. I've been lucky enough to be able to have both in my life treks to places like Australia and South Africa and Zambia and Russia, as well as nights sitting in the backyard of our house in Conneaut, looking out over Lake Erie and basking in the beauty of another night's sunset. In every case, there was a need for us to get ready. Whatever we were doing, however far we were going or however close we were going, we needed to have things in place, a plan set, prepared, a time to gather things together that are needed so that the adventure that we are on, no matter how short it might be, goes off with as little issue as possible. If we are traveling overseas, we know we need to make sure that we have all of the right passports, all of the right visas. In some cases, we need to make sure that we have all of the right shots. If we're going closer to home, maybe it's simply making sure that we have things like sunscreen, a hat, mosquito repellent, and enough water for the day. 
Maybe it's as simple as making sure that we have a blanket to lay out on the grass as we sit in the back and watch the sun set. When I was in Scouts, we would go on camping trips every week, or every month, excuse me. Normally they were nearby locations and we planned everything, sometimes months in advance, so that we would be able to get there, have a fun time, have everything in place that we needed to have in place. That didn't keep us from having to deal with rain on every single camp out. I will tell you, by the time that I had been in Scouts for a little over a year and a half, I had been on over 50 nights of camping, and it rained at least once on all of those nights. We tried to make sure that we didn't run into rain, but even the best planning doesn't help sometimes. But regardless of what we did, where we go, how we journey, we have to be ready for it, one way or another. And I think the same thing can be said as we embark on our journeys of faith. We need to get ready. We have to have things kind of set out and prepared in a way to follow in the steps of Jesus and to walk in the paths of God. But what does that mean, really? What does it mean to be ready to walk down a journey of faith, to set out along in the footsteps of God? How do we get ready to set out on that path? It's a good question that we will begin to investigate today and through the weeks ahead. What does it take? What food do we need to have for our journey to prepare us and get us ready for a lifetime trek of faith? And so we begin this morning looking at, the, at this idea through the lens of the story we shared from the gospel. If we're thinking a little bit about what it means to get ready for our journey of faith, one of the most simple answers that we can give, the basic starting point of everything, is we need Jesus, right? We, simple answer, we need Jesus. And that might be a basic answer to the question, but it doesn't necessarily give us the full meaning of what it might mean. In the story that we have from John, we encounter Jesus and the disciples traveling to Jerusalem for one of the many festivals. They're there, they're going into the city past the sheep gate. They see several people there who are on the outsides of society, the lame and the invalid and the paralyzed and the blind. For those who were there, it was a way of life, right? This is the way that they lived every day, in and out. A journey of its own, in a way. There was a daily trek that they had to take from wherever they were, whether they were being carried by friends or in some other way taken to the pool. They would watch the throngs of people pass by and never th who would never think twice about who it was that were there or what they might need. And at the end of the day, they would journey back home where the day-in, day-out voyage of hopelessness may continue. So these people were there by the pool having their own journey. But I want to think about that in terms of faith. What does it that mean for them? They would be there day in and day out because they had faith. Faith in God who would heal them in the stories that they had heard over and over again that at this pool God would be present and that they could be healed. It is why they came every day to be healed or to hope to be healed. They also needed something else. They needed someone who would listen to them, who would be willing to place them in the pool when the water was stirred up maybe for the hundredth or thousandth time. So they would just have that opportunity to be made new. They had faith. All of these people did. But what they needed to get going was transformation. They needed to be made new. And that was especially the case in the story of the man 
that we read today. They needed Jesus. They needed Jesus to come and make them new. Jesus is the one who takes time to stop and to listen and to ask what can be done. Jesus is the one who transforms the man's faith, telling him to get up and walk. You don't need the pool. You have been healed because of God's grace and God's love. It is the transformation that starts the man down the journey of faith where he begins to go out and tell those who ask, who is it that healed you? It was this man, Jesus. The journey starts with Jesus. But it also needs us. We also have to be a part of this. Because as we read the story, what also needs to be pointed out is what Jesus asks. He asks the man, do you want to be made well? Now, the man could simply answer the question, yes, I do. I want to be made well. But he doesn't respond with a simple yes, but he kind of answers in his own way. Or as Julie might say, in a way that I would answer the question. Instead of a simple response, he says that he doesn't have anyone to help him when the waters get stirred up, and by the time he does, or the, by the time he gets over to the pool, it's too late. He wants to be healed. He doesn't know how to answer the question well because he wants to be healed. Yes, I do. But I don't have the foundation to be able to get there. I have no one to show me the way. Our journey sometimes needs us to say yes. We need to have something to start it out. We need to have a place to begin to get the energy to jolt us forward. That's the idea of this breakfast. We need to have a good foundation to get started. We need to have transformation. Our journey of faith needs to have Jesus tell us to get up and walk because we recognize that we need to be healed. I liken the process a little bit to what happens to chocolate cereal in milk, the background that we have here. I want you to think for a moment what happens when we, when we have chocolate cereal. Think back to maybe when you were kids or when you had kids and what happens to cocoa pebbles when we have them there. At first, the milk that is poured in is white and ready and clean. We've just poured it over the cereal, but over time, what happens to the milk? It transforms a little bit, doesn't it? The milk transforms into a wonderful leftover, a wonderful byproduct, chocolate milk because it takes on the flavor of what has been poured over it. The milk allows the chocolate flavor in the cereal to make it into something new, to transform it into something that it wasn't before. In a similar way, in our faith walks, we allow Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, to pour over us in our baptism. At that point in time where we have said, I need something more. I need Jesus. Jesus, will you help me? Will you walk with me? Will you be there with me? We enter into baptism and the waters of baptism flow over us. And we're kind of like the milk. We're, we're the, it's a backward analogy a little bit because instead of the milk pouring over the cereal, the spirit pours over us and embeds in us and transforms us as we continue to walk down the path of faith, as we continue to learn, it is a great way that we get jolted into a new life. We get to be made new in Christ and transformed. It is a journey that takes a lifetime. You know, the, the milk has to sit a little bit in the chocolate cereal before it transformed. We have to sit a little bit in the spirit and with Jesus 
and with God and we have to study and we have to listen and we have to pray and we have to be willing to be present with God to be able to be transformed and made new. A journey of faith is something that makes us new over and over again. It brings new life to us again and again. And to be ready for that, we have to be willing to be made new, to be healed, to be allowed to, to allow Jesus to do what Jesus does best, to allow God to do what God does, and to allow the Spirit to be poured out over us, around us, and through it through us. Faith is allowing the mystery of God to transform us from the beginning to the end. To be ready for the journey, we have to be willing to say yes, however we choose to say yes, whatever that looks like, and wherever that is along the paths of our lives. We also need to allow God to do God's work. Jesus will walk with us on that journey. Our path needs to have a guide. We have this Holy Spirit leading us. I was thinking about this a little bit. When we did our travels in Russia, we had a guide that would help us along the way. They were the ones that helped us get our passports and our visas and get through all of the paperwork and rigmarole that goes with being an overseas traveler in a country that may not... Or really want you there in the first place. I think of the Holy Spirit in that way. The Holy Spirit is our guide, helping us learn what it means to be a follower of Christ, allowing us to, to change along the way of that path, but guiding us so that we continue to be in a place where we know what love and grace and mercy and hope look like. We get to be like the milk, transformed into something wonderful and glorious. Something that is gloriously the same, but somehow magnificently different. We have to learn to say yes. We have to have that beginning place to start. It is our place to say yes to Jesus. It's how we start out on our journey. But it's not the only thing that we need to do. We also have to be willing to share. The man went and told those around him who it was who healed him. Part of our beginning on this journey of faith or, this con or continuing on our journey of faith is telling those around us who it is that has healed us, who it is who continually makes us new. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, allowed to work in us and work through us. Wherever we are on our trek, wherever and whenever we are on our journey, the transforming love of God and Christ is poured out on us through the Spirit, making us new through and in all things. I've begun to think a little bit about what that means for me on this place, in this place, and in this time. You know, you think about pastors sometimes, we, you think we have it all kind of figured out. But we're on the same type of journey that you all are on. We have are times where we are deeply moved by the Spirit, that we know where God is moving us and how God is moving us, where we are in study and reading Scripture and thinking about it and, and doing those things. And then there are times that we are in the desert where we need to have the Spirit move us forward, where we need to listen to God's Spirit. And I've been kind of in that desert place a little bit, but I'm beginning to listen again to where the Spirit is moving and what it is that I need in my own spiritual life to be able to be a strong, you know, to be able to share the journey with you. 
And so that's a little bit of where this series comes from. What do we need to continue to be fed along the way of our journeys? What are the things that we need so that we might be able to share the love of Christ with our communities around us? And so I invite you to come with us to join in the trek as we begin to move forward to get ready to get up and walk with Christ. Amen.